Okay, today we are talking about the last method for solving quadratic equations. And it is by using the quadratic formula. So come up to that quadratic formula. If you take the standard form of a quadratic equation, and that is ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero, that's our standard form, <clears throat> and you solve it by completing the square, then you come up with the quadratic formula. And so hopefully some of my students might listen to this because I wouldn't do it in class. I'm actually going to sing the song to help you remember it. And it goes x equals negative b negative b plus or minus square root plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac b squared minus 4ac over 2a over 2a so if you have to memorize it, that's an easy way to memorize the quadratic formula. So an example of that, here we have one, 5x squared minus 8x plus 3 equals 0. The first thing you want to do, if you have it in standard form, as we do here, is to write the values for a, b, and c. So we're going to come down and we're going to say, hopefully you realize that a is equal to 5 and b is equal to negative 8 and c is equal to 3. So we plug those into our quadratic formula looking right up here. So in the first parentheses I'm going to put b which is negative 8. So we would put in negative 8. And the second one is b squared so again I'm going to put negative 8. And then it's b squared minus 4a so in this block I'm going to put a which is 5 and then the next block I put c equal to 3 and then on the bottom I have a again which is 5 and that's just setting up the problem an example of setting it up we're going to do another example and we're going to step through the process of actually simplifying it by hand so Here's a problem. What are the solutions of x squared minus 4x equals 21? Okay, hopefully you've noticed it's not in standard form, so we actually have to get the 21 over to the other side. Now, you can do what we've always done, and that is to subtract 21 from both sides. But some people have mentioned lately that we can just move the 21 over there. It's just a shorter method by changing the sign. So now we have x squared minus 4x minus 21 equals 0. Okay, so again, a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 4, and c is equal to negative 21. So I'm going to write down the formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And then I'm going to go write it again. And this time, everywhere I have a variable, I'm going to put parentheses. So I have, there's my negative b. But I don't write b, I write the parentheses. And then I have b squared minus 4 a, C, this eraser here is driving me nuts, all over 2A. So let's go plug in what we have. A is equal to, well actually the first one we come to is B. So my B is negative 4, so this is B. Negative B plus or minus B squared minus 4A, A was equal to 1, C c is equal to negative 21 all over 2a. Now the other thing that we talked about before we um, I'm, well we'll go ahead and we'll keep, we'll keep working through it. So that becomes x equals negative negative 4 of course is positive 4 plus or minus the square root of let me put a little squiggly here so you can see where one ends negative 4 squared is 16 negative and a negative give me a positive 4 times 21 is 84 so I just simplified each part 
Oh, where are my students when I need them? Okay, nobody was here to tell me that I wrote A instead of what A was equal to, and A was equal to 1. So 2 times 1 on the bottom, I should have a 2. All right, so if we continue, then I have x equals 4 plus or minus 16 plus 84 is 100 all over 2. And then hopefully you can tell me that the square root of 100 is 10. So that's 4 plus or minus 10 all over 2. And then that becomes x equals 4 plus 10 over 2 on 4 minus 10 over 2. That gives us a final answer of x equals 4 plus 10 is 14 over 2 and negative 6 over 2. Now, do you have to write down all the steps? Not necessarily as much as you can do. Um, from each step. If you can go from here straight to 100, that's fine. But the more steps you write down, then it's easier to see where there's a problem, if there ever is a problem. And one thing we did talk about, when you put it in the calculator, depending on your calculator, okay, but you have to be careful, and sometimes you have to remember to put parentheses around the numerator and around the denominator so that your calculator knows where it ends and where it begins, okay? The next thing we're going to talk about is just summarizing the different methods that we have to solve quadratic equations and when we would use them. So hopefully you can remember that if we had a graphing calculator handy, that the easiest method to use to solve a quadratic equation is by graphing. And we're looking for where the graph intersects the x-axis. That's how you know what the solutions are. Okay, if there is no x term, all right, and that's also another thing we said, well, that would mean that b would be equal to 0, okay, if we have no x term, or an example would be x squared minus 16 equals 0, okay, there is no x term, that's the one where we want to do find the square root of each side, so we're just yeah, using square roots. If you can factor the equation easily, by all means, factor it. All right, if the x squared, use it, you're going to use this method if x squared coefficient is 1, or we say that is if a is equal to 1, but you cannot easily factor the problem, then that's when it's not such a bad idea to complete the square. And then the last method, if you cannot factor it easily or at all, you're going to do what we just talked about today, and you're going to use the quadratic formula. Okay, so what's going to happen in these types of problems? It's going to say, which method would you choose to solve each equation? So keep in mind, they're not asking you to solve, they're asking you which method to use. And you have to justify your answer. So here, x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals 0. Okay, hopefully you can see, wow, do I know the factors of 12 that add up to 8? We do. So this would be an example of one where factoring would work. So we're going to say factoring because it can be easily factored. All right, look at B. B says 169x squared equals 36 don't necessarily want to factor that one. This would be an example of one where it would be easier for me to use square roots. And hopefully you noticed using square roots because b is equal to 0. You can say b equals 0 if you want to or you can go ahead and say there is no x term. Either one of those is acceptable. Alright, looking at the last one uh, 5x squared plus 13x minus 1. If I want to factor, then I can easily come up with 5 times 1 is 5. The factors of 5 that give me 13. There are no factors of 5 that give you 13. 
So that cannot be easily factored, and a does not equal 1, so I am actually would use the quadratic formula on this type of problem. Quadratic formula because it cannot be easily factored. Okay? All right, the last thing we have to talk about today is something called the discriminant. Okay? The discriminant is the expression under the radical sign. Some people seem to have forgotten what the radical sign is. That's the radical sign. So if you go back to our original formula that we have here, then the part that's the expression under the radical sign is this right here. So that is what we call our discriminant. <clears throat> so you want to write that up there. Let's uh, we'll put b squared. We're going to be writing it a lot, but just so you see, in case you ever forget when you're looking at it. All right, the discriminant is the expression under the radical, and keep in mind that when you evaluate it, it can either be positive, negative, or zero. Okay, and hopefully you remember from our earlier discussions, when you look at a graph, you can tell how many solutions it has by looking at the graph. We just talked about it on the page before. We're looking at where it crosses the x-axis. So if it crosses the x-axis twice, then it has two real solutions. If it touches the x-axis once, there's one real solution. And if it never touches the x-axis, we say there are zero real solutions or no real solutions. And in each of these cases, as you look at it, you will see that the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, for two real solutions, it is greater than zero, which is positive. All right, if there is one real solution, then b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero. Okay, you can see when you plug the numbers in here, you're going to get zero. And then b squared minus 4ac, if I have no solutions, it's going to be less than zero, which of course you know is negative. So how are you going to know when the only part of your quadratic formula that you need is the discriminant? Because your question will tell you, or excuse me, will ask you how many. How many real solutions? That means it's that your answer is going to be there are going to be two real solutions, one or none. So how many means you need to think to yourself, I've got to go evaluate b squared minus 4ac. So going back to our equation, 6x squared minus 5x equals 7. Okay, again, it's not in standard form, so I have to move the 7 over. 6x squared minus 5x minus 7 equals 0. And from there, a is equal to 6, b is equal to negative 5, and c is equal to negative 7. So we go back to our expression of b squared minus 4ac. And anywhere I have a variable, I'm putting parentheses because I'm going to plug something in. All right, b for b squared, b is negative 5. a is 6. And c is negative 7. So we put that in our calculator. And in one fell swoop, we have an answer of 193. Now be careful, we, we're we just trying to figure out what the discriminant is like. So 193 is greater than zero, or it is a positive number, which means the answer is going to be two real solutions. How many means I'm going to answer zero, one, or two. And again, this is where my discriminant was greater than zero. This is where my discriminant was equal to zero. 
and this is where my discriminant is less than zero. And that is the sum of the quadratic formula and the discriminant.